What is up, heroes? This is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. It has been a minute since I've recorded. As I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, my recording situation has been a bit fickle lately, and so, well, my ability to record has been a bit rough, and I'll be moving in about a week, so I appreciate your um, understanding as things may be a little bit inconsistent over the next week or so. But um, anyways, in the last episode, we finished up one of the timelines, or rather, we got to one of the locks. It was an ex exploration of Kay's memories, and it was a blast learning about that, and I think it's going to be really important going forward. However, now we're going to be branching off yet again. I think we're going to want to go back here and just choose the other door. So we chose the blue door, but I think now we're going to want to switch to... Whatever our other choice is. I don't entirely remember what it is, but I'm sure it'll come back as we uh, jump back in time. So we chose to ally. I don't remember with who, but uh, was it was it Phi? Actually, I don't remember. I'm sure we'll figure it out. But anyways, I swallowed. I, Alice and I will. Okay. So we have a couple different options we chose to go through the blue door with Kay, but we could also choose to go through the green door with Luna or the red door with Clover. Part of why I'm initially really confused is it looked like there were only two branches from this decision. So is are two of these options, the two that we have remaining, really going to lead to the same no matter what? Is somebody going to be so adamant about going through with whatever combination that it doesn't really matter what we choose here? We're going to end up with one of them either way. Either way, Alice is still alive. Uh, it's been a while since that's been the case. Uh, and we are partnered up with her. So let's go through... Do we want to go through the green door with Luna? I think that's the garden with Luna. So let's go through the red door with Clover. Alice and I will take Clover and go through the red door. No. I cannot allow you to do that. Darn it, Kay. We don't have time for this. Choose a different door. Yeah, so I, I figured one of the options, or, I mean, two of the options were essentially equivalent. Please. He stood in front of the red door, solid and immovable in his metal armor. I didn't think I could force my way past him, and I knew I didn't have the time to try. Come on, Sigma, you're pretty swole. Hit the gym. You can move, Kay. Crap. There were two doors left for me to choose from. But which one? Alright, so it looks like we're going to be going through the green door with Luna. It's interesting that the grayed out we don't have a grayed out option for blue door with K, even though that's what we did last time, right? And that led to the rec room. Let's see what happens when we go through the green door with Luna. Maybe, actually, you know, it's behind each of these doors is three potential um, ways to go, right? So it's not like we're necessarily going to go back to the garden with Luna again. Anyways, Alice, Luna, the green door. Right. I'm coming. They both took off for the door, and I followed behind at a run. I'm trying to remember the dynamic, right? Because Kay was very adamant about not going with a particular person. I think it was Dio. Wouldn't be surprised if it was Dio, right? But uh, I'm trying to remember exactly who that was. I don't remember. Maybe it's in the log. I would, however, not be surprised if the log just didn't extend beyond where we started this. Yeah. So... So I don't really know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, they both took off for the door, and I followed behind at a run. And I glanced back over my shoulder in time to see the others head into their respective doors. Phi, Dio, and K ducked into the red door. Oh, so maybe it was K and Temyoji that didn't want to be together? Something like that? I don't know. I think so. Phi, Dio, and K ducked into the red door, just as Temyoji carried Quark through the blue door, Clover right on his heels. Interesting. I'm trying to remember. I think Clover really wanted to be with Alice. Two, one, zero. Chromatic door is closing. But yeah, Temyoji carries Quark. Who's not doing so hot. Phi, Dio, and K. That'll be an interesting dynamic. Mostly because of Phi and Dio, but throwing K into the mix. Whoa. Is this a dead end? All three doors seem to be locked. Interestingly, the treatment center is labeled. That's unfortunate. What's this thing here? It looks like the device next to the number 9 door. 
Why don't you try pulling the lever? Might as well. Oh. So it's not the treatment center. Huh? Look at the door on the right. It opened. Do we know what this room is? Is this the, like, Gollum Alley thing? Huh? That doesn't make sense. Why would just the one on the right open? How do you open the other two? You're probably just overthinking it. That door opened. That means we're going through it. Bring it on. I mean, yeah, I get it. I would be curious enough to try pulling the lever a couple more times, though, to see if the other doors open and it's maybe just like one at a time, right? And it cycles through them. But, but anyways. Don't go soft on me now. I'll leave you behind. Come on, Sigma, let's go. Let's see what room we have in front of us. Yeah, Gollum Bay. So now we're finally going to see what was in the safe, right? Because in the other timeline, we stopped by here. Somebody had somehow unlocked this door and gained access to it and whatever was inside the safe. But we didn't even know what was inside the safe. But now if we figure out what that is, we can th go back to that previous timeline and think, what tool, what information does somebody have that shouldn't, right? Or that we don't know about that may influence their decisions, their actions. Anyways, what is this place? It's kind of confusing, isn't it? What is it for? Well, I think it looks like some sort of workroom. If you say so, we should split up and search it. We need to find um, key cards with moon symbols on them, right? Yes. They should be somewhere in this room. Alright, let's get to it. Yeah, fairly straightforward. Got ourselves an escape room. Very exciting. Been looking forward to a puzzle. It's been a while since we've had one, right? We had so much drama, so much plot action going on in the previous timeline that we didn't really have a lot of time to solve many puzzles. Um, at least in this manner. But, alright, so a brief look around at the Golem Bay. And, uh, looks pretty dark. <laughs> Pretty grim. What do we have going on over here? It looks like this is maybe a room where androids or robots would be developed, right? So let's take a look at what we have going on here. What the heck is this guy? Maybe it's an Egyptian mummy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Fitting you would say that, Alice. Anyway, you look at it, it's a robot. Then maybe it's a robot? There's no maybe about it. I can't imagine it's anything else. You're kidding, right? That's insane. Well, what do you think it is? Just a well-made mannequin. That's one way of putting it. What is this? A radio. Okay, anything interesting about its appearance? It seems to have a plug, so maybe we can attach it to something and it'll play a particular uh, tune or something like that. It's got an antenna. Do you think it could be a radio? Why don't you try turning it on? Yeah, well, I tried that. Nothing happens. Maybe the batteries are dead? Hmm. What is it? I don't think it runs on batteries. There's an electrical socket on the side here. So you're saying it needs a power cable. Good to know. Also, note the music, right? Some places we enter and it's like very upbeat, fast-paced, like energetic, like dramatic music. This is much more low, sort of eerie, unsettling um, theme, which is, which is fitting for uh, <laughs> what we have going on. I mean, the room itself is very dark and glum. And what is, what is this over here? A chevron block. Okay. What is this? It looks kind of like a hexagon if you flipped one of the corners in. I mean, technically it is still a hexagon, but... <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Is this like a fluid spill? What is this? It feels kind of greasy. Maybe it's oil? Alright. Is that useful? Robot-y thing. I don't think it's just a crash test dummy or something like that. Alright, well, it doesn't appear to be much more to inspect in the area. Um, so I think we'll leave it at that for now. There's obviously the safe down there. What's going on over here? This is probably where we can place a variety of shapes in order to, um, well, open the door. 
What's this thing? It's shaped like a star. Maybe you need to put something into it? Yeah, I mean, we, if, if we have three of those chevron things, we'll fill this, but... Something that's shaped like a star, I'm assuming? <laughs> Makes sense. Oh, so we probably need to find all three of them and combine them before we can use that. Makes sense. Alright, so what do we have on this side of the room? This kind of looks like a stage. Yeah, like for disco. <laughs> really? Disco? What's disco? Uh, who knows? Not me. So this is actually pretty interesting, right? Um, it seems like such a lighthearted exchange, but how is it that Luna has no idea what disco is, right? How does somebody from the year 2028 not have even any idea what disco is? I think that's actually surprisingly revealing, right? For such an offhanded remark, um, I think it tells a lot. And it makes me think that Luna is from a completely different time period, right? She's not old by any means. Neither is Alice, though, but I feel like anybody in the year 2028 will still have at least heard the disco if they're, I don't know, in their, heard the word disco if they're in their 20s, have some sort of idea what a disco ball is or what a disco, like, I don't know, like dance move or club or whatever, it has some sort of idea what disco is, but to have never heard of disco, you have to be pretty far from the 80s, etc. I think, I think it's the 80s, 70s. <laughs> like, it's not like I'm super familiar, but I'm... To be so unfamiliar that you've never heard of disco at Luna's age is pretty atypical. Which makes me think, at the very least, Alice and Luna are from completely different ages. And, um, well, as we've talked before, that's something that's pretty important to keep track of. Anyways, who knows? Not me. Alice trying to not appear old. Is there a marking here on the wall? It kind of looks like it, doesn't it? In the center, there's that sort of, uh, almost pillar-like shape. It looks like it has some designs in the center. There's some symmetry around the designs, but I'm trying to click on anything, and I'm not really seeing much. What did it say? Both sides of the room have a long platform that looks kind of like a stage. All right. What do we have here? A lot to interact with. The lower part of the control console. There are switches and dials everywhere. They all make absolutely zero sense to me. Doesn't this button seem suspicious? Yeah, most of the buttons are boring or just incomprehensible, but this one speaks to me. You know what it reminds me of? Do you guys ever play that game called, like, The Button? Where you can just click the button over and over again and it'll just make silly remarks about, like, don't press the button. How could you press the button if the button, if you press the button, this is what's gonna happen. It's like some old Flash game. Anyways, what does it say? Come on, a big red button on a plate with black and yellow stripes? You couldn't scream, don't press me any louder if it said, don't press me on it. Is it a self-destruct button? Maybe the moment we press it, we'll hear a soft hiss, and then the room will start to fill up with poisonous gas. What if it launches a missile? I don't know, that seems a little... Yeah! Luna just presses it. Hey! What are you doing? It's okay. There's no way anything really dangerous would just be right out here. I'm pretty sure Zero Senior wants us to play through this whole game. It wouldn't make much sense to just kill us in one of these rooms. Interesting, she actually has some pretty good insight into Zero Senior's mentality, right? Maybe, but that's just your opinion. You could be wrong. Well, I guess so. Then why the heck did you... Hey, hey, hey. Calm down, nothing happened, so there's nothing to get mad about, alright? That's not necessarily true, but, you know, it's alright. Hmm. You heard that noise, though, right? Like, something trying to start up. Okay, so it's supposed to activate something, but it didn't really have any luck. The lower part of the control console... Can we interact with any of these dials on the right or any of these switches? It seems like the button is the only thing to actually interact with, but I just want to make sure we're not missing something. And I guess for what it's worth, I'm trying to click on some of the upper parts of the console, right? There's a big monitor, there's some switches, and all of them take me back to the lower console. So I don't think I can actually interact with much on the top half of the, the console here. Alright, what about on the right side? I see a computer, this is a screen, which is probably going to display our passcodes at some point. That's a pretty old keyboard. It looks like it's been used quite a bit. Nothing happens if we try typing on it. Shout out to Lotus and her computer skills from 999. That was a pleasant surprise. It's a computer monitor. Nothing's on it though. I don't see a power button anywhere, but it looks like there's an unplugged cord. A desk with some drawers. There's a PC monitor and keyboard on top of it. Where's the computer? I'd imagine it's built into the monitor. Hmm. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but there's a single cable coming out from the back of it. Is it a power cable? I think so. Then maybe we can connect it to something with an electrical socket. Have you seen anything like that, Sigma? I wonder. I wonder. 
and I think we can plug this cable into the radio. Perfect. Okay. I guess it's nice that we plug the radio in, but what do we do with it now? Why don't you try tuning it? What? You need to adjust it so it's picking up a specific frequency. Maybe we'll hear something. Exactly. If we get really lucky, maybe you can pick up transmissions from outside. Press the tuning buttons until you match the desired frequency. Press the check button to test your solution. You must press the tuning buttons exactly four times. Pressing the check button before then will do nothing. Right, I'll see what I can do. So this is one of the puzzles, right? So I've got to click the tuning buttons four times. Out of curiosity, so that, whoa, so that moved me how many forward? Seven forward? What happens if I hit this? Okay, so it does loop back around, which is what I expected. Um, and if we've got to press it exactly four times, there's got to be some number we're trying to land on and we plan out our moves ahead of time. We could check each of these individually, but certainly one of these is, you know, an, an intended solution that I'm sure we have some sort of clue for. So we'll continue exploring the room and see if we can gain some more insight into what frequency we should try to tune to. Okay, well, I gave it a shot. What frequency am I supposed to tune to it, though? Or tune it to, though? Hmm, I guess it's not going to do as much good unless we know that, huh? You're probably right. Let's see if we can find any clues. Yeah, I like that idea. Okay. What's kind of interesting is I feel like it would have been really easy to miss this computer just kind of scanning the room, right? I mean, now I'm curious, on the left side of the console, is there anything we can do? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Fair enough. Then we will continue sliding along the room and seeing what we find. It looks like we have maybe some lockers over here. So we have a lab coat. There's a white jacket in here. It looks like there's something on the lapel. A name tag? Harold! <laughs> Whenever I hear the name Harold, I, uh, I think of that one subreddit about with all the stock photos. <laughs> Those of you that are familiar. And so what do we have here? Is that 1D or 1-0 on the left? No, it's ID, I bet. And so it's ID 11010. If that's binary, that's what? Um, so 0 on the right would be representative 1. Then the 1 would be representative 2. Then the next 0 would be 4. The next one would be 8. And the next one would be 16. So it would be 16 plus 8 plus 2, um, which is going to be 26, right? Just going to like double check because my mental math has not been <laughs> on point throughout the rest of the Let's Play. So 2, yep. 8, alright, so we're at 10, and then we had 16, 26, alright. So if that's some sort of binary code now that we're supposed to use, then great. Harold. This name tag must belong to a Mr. Harold. There's also something written on the back of it. Yes, there is. Okay. What else do we have in here? The white jacket, huh? Anything of note? Oh look, there's something in this pocket. Another chevron block. Great. Is Chevron the name of that shape? I don't, I'm not too familiar with the word, actually. A doctor's coat, huh? Would you like me to put it on? Huh? Why? I just thought you might be into that kind of thing. <laughs> what? I don't know what you're talking about. See? Bullseye. Look at you all bashful. You can be cute when you're embarrassed. Anything in the pockets? Doesn't seem very suspicious. Okay, but what's this on the right? Is this a binder? There's a single piece of paper in here. It looks like a list. You found a frequency list. You can review it in the archive. All right, let's take a look. Frequency list. ID. Oh, so we don't even have to do any of the, the binary stuff. It just tells us what the frequency would be. So the frequency that we're looking for is 400 hertz. And I think that's all the information we can glean from these lockers. There's still all of this over here, right? There's still all this stuff going on over here that we can explore. However, before we get sidetracked by other stuff, I think I'm just gonna utilize the information we currently have um, as we get it, right? So I don't forget about it. So let's try and get 400 hertz. Notably, we have to use exactly four button presses and given that it's two spaces away, we have to go to the end of the, the screen and come back, right? So if the th triple arrow goes forward seven, I guess what's our total that we need to move, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11. 11, when we consider how much is, this is a single, oh, okay, so that's not what I expected. Um, so this single arrow or single triangle or whatever moves it forward three. The double arrow puts it forward five, and then the triple arrow puts it forward seven. And our goal again is to move forward 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, right? Or another way of thinking about it could also be um, not just 11, but if we were to go one full loop around again, right? So that would be another 9, so 20. So 11 or 20 in four presses. How can we do that? Can we do 11? No, we can't because the minimum is three. So at minimum, we're gonna be doing four button presses and moving forward 12. So the next question is, can we do 20 or even after that 29? Can we move 20? How can we do that pretty easily as a combination of three, five, and seven? Well, I think we could do, we can't do three threes. Um, so what if we did two threes? That would not give us 20 either. Actually, would it? Yeah, if we did two threes and then uh, two sevens, that'll give us 20 in total. So if we were to retry, do one of this, one of this, one of this, and then one of this, we should end up at 400. Cool. Huh? What? What was that noise? Look! The monitor! Okay. It reacted to the noise from the radio and turned on. So it's some kind of voice recognition system then. It looks that way, yes. There's something on the screen. This is... I think it's a blueprint of this room. I found an image of the room layout. Huh. So... A rough sketch of the room. It looks like... Well, so the on and off is probably that control panel thing, right? So when we started the room, we were facing the right side of this map here. Can I draw? Well, technically, I, I guess I can. But we started the room basically here, facing in this direction. And then we started to work our way this way, we looked at the monitor, and so I think this is the computer here. And we haven't explored this part of the room yet. But then these are the stage-like areas on both sides um, where I guess people would presumably sit. The X here is on the far side of the robot's platform. So we weren't able to inspect that at first actually, but it's good to know that there's something on the other side. So let's go see if we can interact with that now that we have the map available. Yeah, so let's go see if we can take a look. Can I? Can I not do that? Can I go around maybe or something? Maybe it's referencing this arm or something? I mean, it's just the... F ah, here we go. Remember the blueprint we saw on the computer? I think the X must refer to this spot. So that means there's an important clue here, right? I would imagine so. It doesn't look very important. All that's here is this puddle of oil. How about trying to wipe it off? Exactly. Wipe it off? Yes. Maybe there's something under it. Oh. So I guess we don't have whatever we need to wipe it off, though. This puddle of oil, how can I wipe it off? Alright, great. So that's where our next clue is going to lead us, is how do we get rid of that puddle of oil? However, we've got a whole bunch of stuff to explore over this way, so let's take a look. The first thing I see is... Whew. What is this? A poster, huh? It's a little unsettling. Yeah, we've got that eye in the middle. I do remember when we looked at the map, right? And those stage areas on both sides of the, I guess, robot table, is what we'll call it. <laughs> uh, there were those six circles. And so maybe this is an arrangement of, well, those. It's a little unsettling. Maybe it's a clue. Yeah, let's take it. Found a poster with an eye in the center of it. All right, not entirely sure how that's relevant yet, but notably we have our third chevron block. So while that we can do that, let's combine them, and we should gain access to that safe now, which is great. Is there anything else of interest? Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. This looks interesting. Whoa, anybody else feel dizzy all of a sudden? No, that was just your imagination. Yeah, right, whatever. So what the heck is this? I have no idea, which makes it pretty useless to us. Hmm... Might as well take it though, right? Maybe I could... What are you going to do with that? 
I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it is yet. It looks to be of interest, though. How about this? Nope. Are you serious? Maybe you could try hitting something with it. What would you hit? Alright, so it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot relevant there. Um, what about on the lower shelves? Anything notable down there? Doesn't seem like it. Maybe there's something in here. I don't think so. Alright, then we'll shift over to the right a little bit. Let's see what we find on these shelves. Wow, game is uh, scrolling quite quickly. So it looks like there's an ID badge over here as well. Battery A. Blue battery. Okay. That's a battery. I don't think we found a place to, to put this battery yet. Maybe it's inside the vault. Thin ones like that are usually used for notebooks. Okay. A toolbox. It's got a key in it. Huh? That's odd. What is it? This key. It obviously goes to this keyhole, but it won't turn. Can you get it out? Hmm, let me see. So we have a rusty key. So maybe the idea is we need to put the rusty key in the oil in order to get it to turn or something like that. Maybe if we roll around a little bit, I don't think that's going to do anything. Um, can we interact with these boxes down there? No, I don't think so. Alright. So before we move on, I do want to use the oil on the key. Maybe if I put this rusty key in the oil, oil covered key, and then go back. I know that we can still open that vault um, behind the table there, but while I'm kind of on this path, let's see what we can do. So let's try this now. I guess it worked. The lock's open. Yeah. Let's have a look inside then, shall we? What do we find? There's a bunch of stuff in here. Might as well have a look then. Bottle of detergent. Washing. Okay. A screwdriver. Okay. A silver key. Okay. So there's quite a bit of stuff, actually. The first thing that comes to mind is the detergent, which can probably be used to help get rid of that oil. You guys ever do that experiment in chemistry class where you have oil in, I don't know, like a bowl of water or something, and you try to use detergent to to push all the oil to the side or something like that? That's pretty neat. Anyways, let's see what we can do. Oh, are you going to use that detergent to clean up the oil? That sounds like a good idea, but, I mean, we don't have anything to wipe it up with, right? I don't think the detergent by itself is going to be enough. You need something to wipe it up with. Then how about putting the detergent on a rag or something? Seems like that would be easier. Yeah, no, I mean, I agree. But I wanted to check. Alright, then let's head on over here and see what we can find. Because I still haven't really found a good placement for the, the screwdriver, the silver key, etc. Huh? That's odd. Why won't it fit? The star-shaped block? Yeah, it's the same shape and everything. Well, maybe it's not the right size. I guess so. It looks like this block is a little too long to fit. What? This block is a little too long to fit. Do I need to, like, shave it down somehow? So they make a star when you put them all together. Yeah. Huh. Can I inspect another different part of the robot, or...? So that's certainly interesting. What happens if I hit the startup button now that the radio is hooked up? There's a red button in the center of the console, let's just try pushing it one more time. There it is again. What is that? I wonder what's making it. Whatever it is, doesn't sound like it's working right. It kind of sounded like it didn't have enough juice or something. The real question is, where would we put a battery, though? Right? We have a battery the blue battery, but I don't know where to put it. Um, I don't see like an obvious place where I can interact with, uh, I don't know, some sort of slot. They said it looks like something you would put in a notebook, so maybe we put it in the monitor? It looks like the monitor's turned off. That's okay. I've got that blueprint stored up here. Is that the only reason we can do? Or only way we can interact with this? I don't think we need it anymore. Interesting. So maybe it is, actually. Um, I still have the blue battery equipped, which is good. Where can I place the battery, though, is the real question. Hmm...
Anything in the lower lockers? No. This? No. When I click on that, that's what happens. Hmm. I'm not sure, guys. So, let's think. This is a little bit too long for the vault. Is there something we have in our inventory that could wear it down or something like that? Uh, not to my knowledge. We have a battery. That control panel says it doesn't have enough juice, which makes me think we need to give it the blue battery, but I don't see a place to actually insert the battery. Maybe, I mean, I'll, I'll do a lot of just clicking in the area. There are a bunch of switches and buttons here. I have no idea what all this stuff on the screen means either. What do these buttons do? Probably shouldn't press any of them just to be safe. All right, we're gonna, you know, oh, the upper part of the control console, it's covered in switches and buttons. I have no idea what any of them do. All right, so we're gonna keep clicking around a little bit and seeing what we find. You guys can probably hear all that lovely clicking sound. And it doesn't look like there's anything that I can really interact with here, aside from that button. All right, I guess we can head over in this direction. Desk with attached filing cabinet, there are drawers in the cabinets. On top of the desk is a computer monitor, a keyboard, as well as a radio with a power cable plugged into it. Any other segment where I can insert a battery? I don't think so. And again, if I click on the left side, it just takes me there. So that must not be where I insert the battery then. The question then is, where does the battery go? Is it somewhere in the robot itself? Do we need the robot to talk? Hmm. It doesn't seem like it. And I believe it said that it looks like it would go in a notebook, right? Blue flat battery. I wonder if it goes into some kind of flat electronic device. I think we already tried the monitor, though. Didn't we? I'm fairly confident we already tried it. There's the radio, here's the, yeah, and then there's the keyboard. So none of those worked either. I don't think we found any other electronic devices either. So that makes me think then we're, we're not going to be working with this. All right. Bottle of detergent we can't use without having something to wipe up the oil with. The screwdriver, what can we use the screwdriver on? I didn't really see a lot that came to mind, but maybe we can remove certain parts of the robot. Um, and that would be a way that we could gain access to something we otherwise couldn't have. But I'm not really seeing much. Not there. Unlikely to be, you know, the, the corners of this vault or anything. Where else could we use a screwdriver, though? I didn't see any lids that were covering things. Maybe, maybe like some of these boxes. Let's climb up on top of it. What's that going to accomplish? This we already opened and you know, it's empty. There's nothing in there anymore. So that utilizes everything we have to work with there. And it's not like we're using the screwdriver on anything in here. Yeah, yeah, pushing down on it didn't seem to do anything. So, yeah, I'm not really seeing a whole lot to work with, honestly. We have a silver key as well, but I don't remember a key being really used for anything. So I don't really know where that would go. The only other thing I can think of is, what could we combine here, right? Like, I don't know. Is there some way we can use the screwdriver on, I don't know, like the key? Or the ID? Doesn't seem like it, right? Unsurprisingly. And now I feel like I'm just more so guessing because I can't really come up with much. I feel like there's gotta be some something I can interact with I haven't clicked on. Hmm. And we can't tune the radio frequency anymore, so that's not an option. If, we, if this is too long, what do we do? Right, how can we 
narrow it? I don't know. I feel like we'd have to like, I doubt the screwdriver is the option, right? If it's too long to insert into that vault thing, what can we do about that, right? No good. Doesn't matter how many times I try, it won't fit. Maybe it goes somewhere else. But then the question is, where else does it go, right? Is it somewhere on our friend here? I don't know. When I zoom in here, it really just zooms in on that oil. So if it doesn't go in there and it goes in somewhere else, where would it go? I don't see any star-shaped slots anywhere else, right? Is something missing? Almost certainly, but I can't see where to place it. Um... Is this like... I mean, I can't access these lower shelves, really. There's nothing on the ceiling that I'm unaware of. I mean, I guess this is locked, right? This lock looks like a door, it has, it has a keyhole. Is that what we're supposed to interact with? I would be very surprised if interacting with the lock would be the way to uh, progress the story. It has a keyhole. Um, normally we find a key in the safe, so I'm not surprised that that's not what we're really supposed to do. Maybe we come back to this? Hmm. I mean, we have that poster with the eye in the center that we weren't really able to do much with. But I'm still not really seeing much of what I can do with it, right? Hmm. Um. Yeah, I really don't. I mean, there's got to be a way to decipher this, right? It's got to make some sort of sense. But, um... I'm not seeing what that would be yet. Like, I'm not seeing how this relates to anything in the room yet. So... I don't know. Is there, like, something on the ground that I'm missing? Can I, like, go over to the door there? What are you doing? That's the door we came in through. There's no point in going back out of it. All you're going to find is the closed chromatic door. You do know that, right? Is there anything on the stage over here? I don't think so. Then what are we supposed to do? I put the key somewhere in here? I don't... I didn't see anything for a key, but... Alright, I mean, I guess I'll... I'll click around, guys, and I'll edit to when it's relevant to you guys again. <laughs> but, um... Whatever I'm supposed to interact with next, it's far from apparent. Is there something on the wall here? No. Oh, there are drawers down here that I can interact with. Wow, that's tough to uh, click on. <laughs> that's really tough to find. It's like, if you're at the center of the control panel, you can see, oh, maybe there's, you know, this computer over here, you come over here, but it doesn't even really show you the option of that those drawers down there, nor do they look very, I don't know, accessible here. But if you click on the drawers specifically, you'll find this. No good, it won't open. Is it locked? Yeah. Well, there's a keyhole here, so we should probably get some, or probably get it open if we can find a key that fits. Wait, Sigma, don't you already have a key? Hurry up and put it in. Yes, it worked. Now open it. Hold on, no need to rush me. Gotcha. So this is the next step. I, I figured it was just something that I hadn't found in to interact with in the environment, because it was like, there's really no, nothing I'm seeing with what I've interacted with so far. So we put that in. Does that do anything? Yes, it fits perfectly. Did did we just hear a noise? Yeah, from the middle drawer. The middle one, huh? Alright. 
So do we unlock this one? We did, and what do we find? A handle. Okay, and it's obviously got that star shape on the back, so this is gonna be for that vault. Anything on the bottom? A tablet. Okay, so uh, clearly this is where we put the uh, the blue battery. Now things are smoothly cruising again. You cannot combine these items. Not as smoothly as I expected. <laughs> All right, let's expect or inspect the tablet. Huh? No response from this tablet. Is it broken? Part of the back seems to be held on by screws. I bet that's where the batteries go. Ah, uh, gotcha. So we can combine this with the screwdriver to open up the back, and it looks like we're going to need both a blue and a red battery. We'll give it the blue battery for now. And I'd imagine inside that vault is where we're going to find the red battery and it's going to turn on the screen and we'll have to input something that'll give us our passcode. And this is going to be what we can do or what we can use in a couple different ways to get our escape and our hidden file password. Yes, perfect. Do you think you can turn it? Yeah, give me a sec. What the heck? Something's coming down from the ceiling. Those are... are they lights of some sort, or what? A monitor? Screen? Whoa, it's it's an android army! Oh my god. They look just like the thing on the table. Robots. Okay. Let's, um, let's inspect them. The other thing is, are they on both sides? They are. Okay. This one is holding the red battery. So that is helpful. We'll combine that with the tablet we have for now. Tablet is on. Oh, hey, the power's on. It's showing something. An authentication screen, maybe? Probably has some sort of security lock. Enter the password. Oh, wow. So we have up to how many digits to work with? 12? And we have numbers as well as letters. Gotcha. So we, we clearly don't have the password yet. But um, we need some sort of clue. Yeah, so this is going to be what we work with. And this is probably where that uh, that poster we tore down is going to come in handy. I know I'm repeating myself here, but what the heck are these things? They're robots, I told you. So what, is this some sort of secret military R&D lab? Why would you think that? Is it obvious? These things are weapons. You don't know that. What, are you going to say they're built for housework? Sure, I can see people buying monstrous metal skeletons to stock their house. Vacuuming rooms, folding clothes, and rocking children to sleep. I mean, I can see it. Have you ever played Detroit Become Human? Pretty good game, in my opinion. I don't think all these robots are here just to scare us, or surprise us or something. This just seems like an awful lot of work to go to just to get a reaction out of us, you know? Yeah, you have a point. These are definitely real robots. And for all we know, we may be one of them, right? A bunch of kind of creepy looking robots lined up along either side of the room. They appear to have been powered on, but they haven't moved at all. Okay. Um, can we interact with these other ones? No, it doesn't look like it. What about the three over here? Nothing seems too off about them. I guess maybe when we eventually are able to power things on? Um, I never thought this was actually a platform for robots. Yeah, maybe when we can power things on with that control panel, <laughs> this one's my boxers, uh, we'll get some sort of indication about what the poster means and those will be two different passwords for our uh, or, yeah, passwords to get our escape and hint file passwords this one's wearing boxers yeah looks like it why would a robot be wearing underwear maybe he's uh hiding something hiding what though like a diary or something why the heck would you add a diary in your crotch okay well maybe he's got a hose or something whoa dang better cut to the chase here whatever we'll know as soon as we get them off Remove these shorts of obfuscation and let us gaze upon it, this so-called hose. Aren't you getting a little too excited about this? This is pretty funny. All right, here goes. Ah, Luna, I haven't done anything yet. He's still decent. Besides, when you covered your face, you opened your fingers so you could see out. How old are you? <laughs> ah, you two are driving me nuts. I'll just take them off. Huh? Hiya. So funny. So we have boxers here. Uh, I don't see anything exceptional about them. I think the only thing is they're going to be cloth that we can use to wipe that oil. Boxers, you should try them on, Sigma. What? Why? Thought they might suit you. Why would you think that? Well, what do we need them if, for if we're not supposed to wear them? Hmm, maybe we're supposed to use them to wipe something? Uh, not to wear, but to wipe. Yes, I think that's it. Yeah, I agree. Um, that's a pretty, pretty strong hint. 
Now, what about these three over here? Anything special with them? Doesn't look like it. So, if that's the case, we will just, um, we'll go ahead and use that as intended. We'll combine them with the detergent. Boxer soaked in detergent. And we'll wipe up that oil. Okay, here goes. You're gonna wipe up the oil with the boxers, right? Yeah. Okay, go for it. Okay. Looks like 120 volts, right? Good. It looks like it's clean now. I wonder what this is. There's something written here that the oil was covering up. Yeah. A-O-Z-I? <laughs> no, not quite. No, you're reading it from the wrong angle. 120 volts. So that's how much power we need to activate the robot or something? Is that something we can set over here? Hmm, could could it be a button that activates all the robots? Oh, just thinking about all of them suddenly waking up, turning to look at us with dead inhuman eyes, then slowly beginning their inexorable march forward. We never survived if they all attacked us at once. Okay, so let's take a look at our inventory, right? We really only have this name tag and this tablet. The tablet, we can input a password, but we don't really have much that we can do with that at the moment, do we? What? What is this? Since when did this get here? This came down with the robots, right? Yes. It's got a pipe running out of it toward them. I have a feeling that means there's a connection there. Supply the correct voltage by connecting the wires. You can begin anywhere on the left and finish anywhere on the right. You can rotate a wire by clicking its corresponding square. The numbers in the middle of each wire indicate the voltage of that wire. Okay, let me just give this a try. Okay. So, did it say we can start anywhere on the left? And make our way to the right and we're trying to get 120 volts, right? So how do we want to do that? Um, at first glance, we're not going to want to use the 100, because no combination involving the 100 is going to get us to 120. So that's good to know. Um, similarly, we're not going to want to use the, the 40 and the 60 together. Um, we're not going to want to do any combination that really leads to 100, right? So I think our best bet is actually going to be the 235s and then um, the 40 and the 10. So let's see if we can do that. So 35. We'll do the 10 like that. Um, huh, so we might have to work this around in an in interesting manner. Ah, uh, that's not going to be what I had hoped. I don't think there's a way to get to this 10 without it connecting to either the 60 or the, um, the 30. Can we make it work with the 30? I think we can if we can maneuver it to the 5. But given that none of these are straight pass-through pipes, that may be difficult, right? So right now we're at 75. So if we get 45, I think we'll be okay. But I don't think that's going to be what we end up with. So we'll have to do something like that, and then here, and that should be okay. Cool. Completed. Good job, Sigma. Oh, you're amazing. I've fallen for you all over again. Wait, there was a first time? Hey, what? Power distribution complete. Pre-boot sequence complete. Please press the power button located on the console. Whoa, whoa, what was that? I'm not sure. Better do what it says, though. Okay. So there's another white screen that could potentially show us a password. That was a fun little, fun little mini game. Um, so let's head on over to this power console and hit the red button. That announcement just now was about this button. You guys ready? I'm gonna push it. Yes, I'm ready. Same here, go for it. I'm ready, I'm ready. All right, and there. Okay. Did, did something happen? <laughs> did it work? Ah, look, their eyes. Eyes? They're probably all lit up like the Terminator or whatever. Oh, wow. So, this is going to tell us what the password is, right? So some of them have their left eye open, the, the, some of them have their right eye open, some of them have no eyes open, some of them have both eyes open. And that's going to tell us what characters we need to use from each side, right? So let's look on the right-hand side here. What do we have? I should probably pull up my memo here. So how do we want to do this? Um, I think the poster, so it was like, I'm just going to put both here and then we'll say left here, left here, 
we'll say none for that. <laughs> and then right here, all these are from the perspective of the robot. And then on the left hand side over here, what do we got? On this side, we have left, none, both, left, right, right? Oh, and then there's one on the, the very end that I think is, um, oh, man, <laughs> sometimes it's tough to find areas where I can click to like drag appropriately. Uh, the one on the very end is also right. Should probably just zoom in on these. And so, yeah, just to be safe, left, none, both. Don't want to make a silly mistake here. That leads to my <laughs> confusion later on. And then left, right, right. Yeah, so that's what we put there. And then I think I missed one on this side as well for the same reason. So starting uh, on this side, what do we have? Right, none, left. That's not true. So I missed this first one on the left, right? So it's left, right, none. Yeah. Okay, left, right, none. And then left, left, both. Okay. Cool. So now that we have that, let's take a look at our poster with an eye on it. So if we look at left, this should be O, and then right would be F, and then none for none of those, and then we would have an H, then we would have an O, and then we would have P. Okay, of hop. <laughs> All right. Um, then we have R, none, and then we have both, E and A, and then we have left, which will be I. Hmm. Okay, and then we have right, which would be N, and then we have right, which would be I. I feel like there should, it should read something, right? But I think these are the, uh, the letters, right? Just doing a quick double check. R E A I N I. I guess the next thing is how do we string these together? Hmm. Well, I mean, either way, we need to input this into the tablet, right? And it's 12 characters long, which makes me think we need to string all of these together. I'll start with the, the other side and see what goes on. So R E. A, I, N, I, and then um, of hop. Oh wait, I did both on the last one, but I didn't. I think it was hope maybe. Can I check the archive? I can, okay, cool. Yeah, so it was hope at the end. Good. Okay, and then of hope. Yeah, I didn't think so. Because it seems like it should be something that makes sense. Let's, um... Looks like we need to put in 12 characters. Yeah, so I mean, I, I feel... Maybe there's a different order here. So again, we've got left, none, and both. Right? Left, none, and both. And then... On the right-hand side, we have left, right, right. So that should, that should make sense. Left would be R. None would be none. Both would be EA. Then left would be I. And then right would be N. And then right would be I. Hmm. Maybe... How could I be misinterpreting this? Because the one that's lit up, yeah, I guess if you consider from like the perspective, they're both, I don't know, this is the center of the room and the center here. 
and if each robot is looking towards the center like this. Whatever eye is lit up Maybe that's the, the mistake I'd been making. So let's consider then the if that's the case, it's not just how they're you know being read right now. It's the left eye of this robot on the far left would actually be B. And we'd have none of the next robot, and then both would be E A. or AE. I think it's we're supposed to go in order though. And then we would have the left eye again, so it'd be C. And then we would have right, oh, so yeah, this is gonna work, and then right, so beacon of hope. And that makes a lot more sense. So let's try that. Cool, so we completed that. You did it, Sigma. You got through the login. Beacon of hope. How optimistic. Sure, sure. Look at the screen. Okay, so it's green. So this is the escape password. Hmm. Is this the password for the safe? You found a safe password. If you would navigate to the password tab. Okay. So now the last thing is how do we get the hidden file password? We look at our inventory just to check. We have a name tag, which I don't think is pertinent anymore. We can't interact with the radio. Just to be 100% safe, can we interact with this anymore? The screen is glowing white, I could probably leave it alone now. No, we can't. The only thing we can really interact with is the tablet, which is not too surprising. So we need to come up with a second 12 character passcode for this, um, well, for the tablet, right? So the only thing that comes to mind is, what if we do the exact opposite of all these, right? So it's gonna be, you can see on the top row, there are four single letter characters, or four single single letter robots, and then one both and one neither. And then on the bottom, we also have that same setup where there are four single character, but that's left or right, and then one uh, neither, and then one both. And so I think if we flip all of those, we'll probably get something else. That would be what I'm inclined to try, because again, a lot of the hidden file passwords are just a reinterpretation or opposite of some clue that was given earlier. So if we open up our archive, and take a look at the poster with an eye on it, open up our memo. What happens if we do the opposite? So on the top, if we do the right instead of the left, we'll get R. And then instead of neither, we have both, we'll have EM. And then for the both, we have neither. And then for IC, we have left, but now we're gonna actually go with right. So that'll be I, right? And then for the last two circles, we had right, which was O, but now it's gonna be N. And then the last one was right, but this time it's gonna be that. So R, E, M, I, N, I. All right, well, we'll see, I guess, right? So then on the bottom we have left, which was an O, but now we're gonna do right. So um, it's gonna be like reminiscing or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll have S instead, and then we had right for CF, which gave us F, but now we're going to get, get C. And then we had N for, uh, or we had neither for the EN, but now we're gonna have both. And then L, uh, which was left for the H, but now we're gonna have right for C. Um, and then, what do we have? We had left for OE, so now we're gonna have E, and then we have neither for the end. Yeah, so reminisce, or reminiscence. Given that that's a word, makes sense. I'm, I'm feeling more confident that we actually got this right. Awesome. Huh, I suspected as much. Good work, I'm impressed. What's our prize, I wonder? The screen's changed. Yeah, so this is gonna be our hidden file password, huh? This looks different. The symbols have changed and they're in different places. Cool, so now we can finally go to the safe and figure out what's going on. I'm surprised that robot in the center of the screen never really came to life, right? Then maybe you should press it right. Here it goes. Oh, <laughs> of course, of course. I'm literally saying like, I'm surprised the robot never came to life. And now here we are at the safe, and the robot is finally coming to life. This is a safe, right? It looks like the ones in the AB room in the lounge. Yeah. 
The one is embedded in the table, but the door looks the same. It probably works like the others, too, then. We just need a password to open it, right? So I think it was, what, sun, moon, star for the uh, hidden file password? Yeah, okay. I'm curious, there was that button above the safe that activated the robot. Earlier in the puzzle, if we had done that, I would have thought that that was something we needed to interact with to get a clue or something like that. But anyways, you did it. Good work. Hm. Well done. What's with the attitude? Never mind that. Let's just see what's inside. Out of curiosity, look, it's eyes. They're glowing red. Does that mean it's on? I guess so. Robot-y thing, it's just like all the others. It looks pretty cool. I like that shade of yellow slash orange. But let's check our passwords again. And then this one is sun, star, star. So let's do that. Sun, star, star. Cool. And what are we going to find in here? This is really important again, remember, because this is something that was missing in one of our other timelines. Somebody, unbeknownst to the rest of the uh, the crew, went into this room and, and opened the safe somehow and had this for the remainder of the timeline. And so when we figure out what this is, we're going to have some sort of idea of what their intentions might have been. Oh, it opened again. I wonder what's inside this time. Yeah, what is this on the right? There's a lot of stuff in here. That's good, isn't it? Better than having nothing, at least. Let's go through them one by one. First, we've got a map. Okay. It says floor B. The map we found in the lounge said floor A on it. Well, we took the elevator down to get here, so floor A must be the upper floor. Yeah. Keep going. There's still a lot in there. These must be... Key cards. They have a picture of the moon on them. This must be what the announcer was talking about then. And we've got two of them, just like with the sun cards. You should take one, Luna. Huh? Why? You're a solo. Alice and I can keep the other one. Oh, of course. Thank you. Alright, what's next? Looks like a note. Is this going to be an extra rule? Here are some more AB game rules for you. Not voting is not an option. If both parties refuse to vote, then everybody gets penalized. In other words, one person out of every color group of three has to vote. So this is the same copy of something that was found in one of the other rooms too, right? So all three of us can abstain. There has to be at least one vote. Why would there be a rule like that though? It seems pointless. I think Zero Senior wants to make sure people are actually playing the game. Regardless of the situation. Yeah, no, I mean, we we encountered in one of the other timelines exactly why such a rule is necessary, right? What sort of situation are you talking about? Well, it could be anything, really. Whatever. We've only got two things left. What's this thing? Huh. It looks like some sort of plug or key. I guess you insert it into something and twist. So this is definitely what the person came here for. A plug or key. For what, though? What could it unlock or, or lock, you know, uh, conversely? Could it be one of the pods in the lab? Or rather, the treatment center? Could it be a way to open the chromatic doors without the necessary bracelets? I don't think so, given that whoever it was who, you know, got in here to take this thing had done so without it, right? So maybe not, but what could this be used for? Did you see anything in here that it could fit into? Even if we did, does it really matter at this point? Maybe... Is it related to the bombs? No, because we have that PDA device that we can connect. We just need to find the passwords. So really, what could this be used for? I'm really not sure. What? Look in the safe. What's the last thing in there? A, a key, right? Is that the key to the exit? Pretty sure it is. We can get out now. Yeah, so I mean, that's typical. But, man, I'm really curious. Awesome, let's... Wait, what should we do about the plug? Um, fine, I guess I'll hold on to it. I doubt we'll need it, but you never know. Sounds good, let's go. What could it be used for? Could it be used for K? Oh my goodness, could it be used for K? There's that, like, keyhole thing on the back of his neck. What, could it be used to, like, power him down? Could it be used to take off the armor? I don't know. There's that timeline where K escapes, right? Could it be used to stop him in that instance? Wow. So that's really helpful information. That's really helpful information. That probably unlocks that ending. Very interesting. Very interesting. Alright, well, I mean, I guess now at this point we've, we've covered everything this room can 
uh, can offer, so let's head on out. The lock for the door. Right now it says lock. You guys ready? I'm gonna open the door. Go ahead. I'm all set. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one, and we made it. You found it. Overall, pretty good room. My only criticism... <sighs> Hold on a second. <laughs> Hold on a second. Mysterious voice, though I did not recognize it. Maybe, maybe sounded like Temyoji, but I don't know. Uh, real quick, I overall like the room. My only criticism is that I wish it was more apparent what some of the objects you could interact with, right? Those drawers mainly... Um, if there was something that stood out a little bit more that from like an art direction standpoint that drew the player to interacting with them, I think that would have been helpful. Otherwise, I think the puzzles were pretty solid. Um, and I liked it overall. Anyways, who is this mysterious person with the question marks who says, hold up, Governor? I I don't know. And I'm going to say that we'll find out in the next episode. My, my recording situation again. <laughs> Sorry, but it's probably not a great time to record at the moment. So... I thank you guys for understanding. I'm really curious to find out who this person is, but it's going to have to wait a little bit. And uh, I hope you guys are looking forward to finding out. I hope you guys enjoy this puzzle just as much as I did. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.